and good evening everybody and welcome here as we get set for race number 22 get continuing on our chase towards the chase for the championship here in the Hershey's Cup Series Season 3 we're getting ready for short track racing under the lights at South Boston this should certainly be a wild one we ended up running a full 51 laps completely green flag in our Almond Joy Series race here this morning well tonight it's 64 laps and we'll have to see if indeed we can run those laps under green flag conditions or not. As on the pole position is Kyle Matthews, two-time winner of the season, already locked into the chase for the championship, provided he can stay in the top 30 in the point stands. Right now he is 19th in points, so in very good situation, but I'm sure he would love to be able to be a three-time winner this season in Hershey's Cup Series competition. He starts on the pole. Alongside of him, the defending champion, Chris Dodd. He's gone 21 races so far, zero victories. Let's keep in mind, Two of his wins in last year's championship season came in the second half of the season. Can he pull it off here today? Cody Lamas, James Richardson, Benjamin Miles, former winners this season, along with Galligan lineup in the top six. Let's get the command. So there's a command to fire it up. Of course, you've got NW Racing's Lamas and Miles. You've got uh, Joe Gibbs Racing's James Richardson, went to Victory Lane a couple of weeks ago. You've got Sean Galligan, who hasn't been to Victory Lane since the Daytona 500. So there's a lot of stories coming to this race. Also, another story coming to this race as well. Our Almond Joy Series race winner, Mitchell Carter, he's in this race. He's starting at the rear of the field, but Mitchell Carter is in this field. We'll have to see if maybe through possible strategy, who knows, can Mitchell Carter maybe pull off a sweep here this weekend. Kyle Matthews getting the pole just one week after his teammate Jessica Shelton went to victory lane at Daytona. So Kyle Matthews trying to continue that wave of momentum for Retro Racing Enterprises. As the green flag is out, we're underway here at South Boston. Chris Dodd trying to get the run on the outside line and clear Kyle Matthews. Like he may just have done that. Yes, he did. Chris Dodd, nice jump there at the start. He goes to the lead, but now Kyle Matthews is going to get back to the left rear and side-by-side side the line. Chris Dodd, valuable bonus point leading that lap. However, Kyle Matthews with the inside advantage going to go back to the race lead. Cody Lamas going to follow in his tire tracks. Levi McIntyre third on that inside line along with John Art. I mean, this is an opportunity like we saw in the Almond Joy Series race here this morning for a driver to possibly be able to put themselves into contention for a championship chase spot by picking up their first win of the season. Levi McIntyre, John Art, those drivers, they have not found victory lane yet this year. As Cody Lamas goes to the race lead, moving Kyle Matthews out of the way. Now what we saw in the Almond Joy Series race here obviously is a lot of passing for the lead early on, but then if this thing goes green like it did in the Almond Joy Series race, these drivers are going to start catching up to the tail end of the field, and catching up to the tail end of the field is actually going to start spreading these drivers out that are on the lead lap. Yes, they'll try and work their way through lap traffic. By McIntyre all over the bumper, literally of Cody Lamas, and now is going to be able to stick his nose to the inside there in three and four. Could potentially also, with it being a little bit longer of a race, could potentially have pit stops take place in this one. And that could really shake things up for sure as well as McIntyre to the race lead. Levi McIntyre, uh, if my calculations are correct, he is currently on a 44 race winless streak. 45 if you count today's race. He has not won since Las Vegas of season two, which was race number three of that season. So Levi McIntyre trying to pick up his first win of the season, trying to pick up the second win of the season for Young Motorsports. JT Bryant, of course, going to victory lane earlier on this year at Arizona. As a matter of fact, JT Bryant right now has fought his way up into the seventh position, battling with a number of Fords back there, including Galligan, Cole Baker, and Keith Batson. There's Baker. Baker comes into this race still as the points leader. 24 points over Cat Tellier. As things stand right now, Cole Baker just needs to finish this race. And he will have locked himself up a spot in the chase for the championship. Because there's really no way that he'd be able to, in the next four races afterwards, fall out of the top 30 in the standings. So Cole Baker just trying to have a consistent run here today. But you can bet, knowing the fact that all he has to do is finish the race... He's probably going to be on the offensive here early on, try and get himself up close to the front, maybe pick up his second win of the season. His only win so far this year coming at Talladega. You can bet he wants to show he can get it done at the short tracks as well. 
Move back up closer towards the front of the field. John Art right now solidly in third. Cody Lamas behind him in fourth. James Richardson trying to close the gap in on Levi McIntyre. And just up ahead, you can see Levi McIntyre is about to reel in the tail end of the field. That is uh, Joshua Sakuli in the 73. Wow, having some spikes here with the frames. That's weird. Sakuli in the 73. Cole Deaver made this race via knockout qualifying. He's back here at tail end of the field. Joshua Michaels, Anthony McCurry, Nathan Hudson. There's last week's winner. From Daytona, Jessica Shelton not having the best of runs right now. Currently scored last time by in 35th place, but trying to fight her way through the field and get up there. After her win last week, Jessica Shelton uh, moved herself up into the 13th position in the point standing. So killing two birds with one stone, moving up high in the point stance and having a victory. Now Joshua Sakuli becomes the first driver to fall a lap down to the race leader, Levi McIntyre. Cole Deaver just ahead is next on McIntyre's hit list. James Richardson just within enough striking distance on Sakuli that when McIntyre made the hole to the inside, Richardson was there to fill it. This time though, Richardson gonna have to do his own work to get by Cole Deaver. It's like he's going to the inside this time into three. Next up ahead for Levi McIntyre would be Joshua Michaels in the 10, then Nathan Hudson in the six. A lot of uh, Silly season stuff been going on here as far as season four is concerned for the Hershey's Cup Series. A lot of drivers going to different places next year. A lot of drivers staying with the old status quo. And Right now, though, all these drivers not even worried about that. They're just trying to get themselves into the chase for the championship to even have a chance to battle for the championship trophy at the end of the season. As Richardson using the machine of Joshua Michaels as a pick. And Richardson now goes to the race lead. One driver just popped up into the top 10, that being Joshua Osborne out of Joanna Atwood Motorsports. Osborne had to race his way into this event, start at the rear of the field. He's already up inside the top 10. So talk about picking up track position early. That would definitely be Joshua Osborne in that 27 car. As Richardson has put Nathan Hudson a lap down, now he'll put Anthony McCurry down a lap. Anthony McCurry, the Season one Hershey's Cup Series champion. This has looked like anything but a championship season though for him. And that 61 Ford is now Daniel Voyles about to be put a lap down. Second in the points, Cat Tellier next on the hit list for Richardson. And you can just see that inside line gets a, a lot of grip. Not exactly the best runs off the corner, but into the corner you can drive it in hard. Give credit to Levi McIntyre though. McIntyre not really forcing the issue. He's just riding right in the tire tracks of Richardson, allowing Richardson to do the hard work. I mean, if Richardson uses up his stuff trying to put cars a lap down, and Levi McIntyre maybe is in a little bit of conservation mode, if we do end up having green flag pit stops, McIntyre might be able to make it a little bit further than Richardson, but now, apparently it's go time. McIntyre puts the bumper to Richardson, and he will use the inside line and the lap traffic as a pick. Uses Zach Flickinger to get by Richardson, and now he'll put last week's winner Jessica Shelton down a lap as well, following behind Blaine Key's U.S. Army Chevrolet. Now look at Kyle Matthews. Matthews started on the pole for this race. He's all the way back here, about to maybe go a lap down as well. He's just ahead of the leader, Levi McIntyre. Blaine Keys now falls down a lap. Let's drop back, see where some of our other drivers inside the top 10 are currently running. Keith Batson in a good battle right now, solidly running in the third spot. He's got Joshua Osborne, the rookie, right behind him. Osborne right now en route to being rookie of the race. John Art still in the top five there in fifth. Got Dylan Pote right behind him, trying to take that spot. He's currently in sixth place. How about Trent Dunham? Nice run there for the Rain-X Chevrolet out of Sega Motorsports. Currently scored, uh, well, he was scored in eighth, but I believe he just took seventh place. Eighth place now would be Carson Scott, who we understand is retiring at the end of the season. So Carson Scott trying to finish out his final Hershey's Cup Series season on a high note. Cody Lamas has now dropped back into the ninth position with Benjamin Miles right there behind him, his teammate, in the tenth spot. Talked about Joshua Osborne fighting his way through the field. Another driver that's a goer, go homer fighting his way up to the front. DJ Curtis right now currently scored in the 11th spot, so a solid outing here for the 5-hour energy Toyota Camry. One of, I believe, three Joe Gibbs racing cars that are in this field here today, along with his rookie teammate Matt Haas and James Richardson, who is currently running in the second position. Let's actually see 
Back up at the front here. Chris Dodd has now actually fallen a lap down as well. So our entire front row, Kyle Matthews and Chris Dodd, have fallen a lap down to the race leaders. Emmanuel Hartnett has also fallen a lap down, as has his teammate, rookie Jonathan Zorlin, and now Daniel Gilbert falling a lap down to Levi McIntyre. Gilbert last time by was scored in 26. So right now we have 25 cars still on the lead lap. And just up ahead, the Seth Cole Baker Motorsports teammates, Sean Galligan and Cole Baker, another couple drivers who started up inside the top six, about to fall off the lead lap. I think McIntyre started this race from seventh. And he's about to nearly lap all the drivers who started up ahead of him. Sean Galligan not going to go off the lead lap without a fight here. Kind of throwing some low blocks on McIntyre into the corners. And now that brings James Richardson right back into the fray. McIntyre trying to be patient. Now is going to be able to get by Galligan. I think Galligan may have actually uh, messed himself up. May have been paying too much attention to the 99 behind him and kind of overdrove the entrance of that corner, so it seems. We're getting close to the halfway point of this race. They made it a full 51 laps on a tank of fuel in the Almond Joy Series race. So, you know, we, we put the question mark out about possible pit stops here in this one. But I'm going to be very surprised, really, if they have to make green flag pit stops. Because it's a very, very small track. And a, a whole lot of uh, playing with the throttle, too. So it, it would be very easy in these kind of corners to be able to save fuel. Levi McIntyre, though, having some trouble getting around Cole Baker. That's going to cost him. Richardson going to get to the inside line side by side between these two. And they might not want to look behind them because you got a couple of lap cars, but not too far back. Joshua Osborne is starting to reel them in. McIntyre doing a good job hanging on the outside line, but that's the line where you use up your, your Goodyear rubber a lot worse than you do on the inside line. Still side by side there with Richardson. He's been able to get Richardson at the line the last couple of times using that outside line. Now he may end up having some difficulties as Joshua Sakuli gets kicked up to the high line. And that's going to serve as a pick there for Richardson to get the lead. And there you see, there's the 27. That Castro GTX Chevrolet. Oh, look out, Treble! Treble, Levi McIntyre just dumped Joshua Sakuli. He took somebody else with him as well. I couldn't tell who it was. That may be a yellow flag, and indeed it is. McIntyre having a lot of trouble getting around Joshua Sakuli. He hooked him off of turn four. We are under our first yellow of the day here at South Boston. And one of the difficulties with short tracks is everybody tries to figure out where they are. Oh, oh, look out, Joshua Michaels getting turned around off the nose of the lap machine of Cole Deaver. Everybody with confusion here of where they're supposed to be lined up. I think JT Bryant was the last car on the lead lap when that caution came out. And now they're going to start lining them up here. Let's see if they're going to make any pit stops. Pits would be open this time. And doesn't look like Richardson came to pit road. I think that was the pit road entrance. And Michaels is on pit road after he got turned around by Cole Deaver. I think Michaels at the time was on the lead lap, but I'm not certain. Oh, and here we go. Nope, this is the pit road entrance, and Richardson's coming, as is Joshua Osborne. Looks like everybody's coming to pit road that's on the lead lap. Levi McIntyre managed to cross the line in third, but you got to think he's got some left side damage after that contact with the inside wall. And I don't see anybody staying out as far as the lead lap cars. So we'll follow the 11 coming down into his pit stall and see if they may be able to get him out first. Looks like everybody else that stayed out was a lap down. Benjamin Miles going to pull into his pit stall there behind Richardson. And Richardson comes off pit road. Oh, a little contact there with Joshua Michaels, who was, I believe, a lap down now. Just completed his stop. Osborne comes out in second. McIntyre still manages to come out third. It'll be Batson coming out in fourth place. Fifth place is going to be Poteet. Dunham in sixth. Seventh, Miles. Eighth, Dylan Young. Then Curtis and Carson Scott. That'll be your top ten. When we go back green, as all the lap machines now are on pit road. 
to make their pit stop. So James Richardson, first on, first off of pit road. He'll restart as the leader. Let's go back and see what happened between Levi McIntyre and Joshua Sakuli. And the other car that was collected was Blaine Keys in the eight. You see right here, Levi McIntyre is trying to get by Sakuli. He's literally putting the crone horn to him. And Sakuli, I'm not sure if Sakuli was trying to get out of the way or not. And at this point, Sakuli's starting to get sideways with McIntyre into his back bumper. He just can't hang on to it. And down into the wall they go. Boy, it's a wonder McIntyre was able to actually get off pit road in third if they got that damage repaired. Blink keys, pretty extensive damage there on the front of his car. McIntyre's damage on the driver's side door area. Sakuli getting the with the uh, left front. You see a buckle on the hood of his advanced auto parts Ford, so... We're going to have to see if that's going to affect Levi McIntyre when we go back to green. He was running at the time in the third position. Matter of fact, I think he might have been actually running in second at the time. And uh, we'll see if that affects him at all. That's what put us under our first caution of the weekend here and first caution of this race here at South Boston. Let's go back to green. Getting ready to go back green. James Richardson, the leader. We're not even going to try and figure out where everybody's restarting because it's not going to make a lick of sense. Richardson out in front. Osborne second, and then the way they came off pit road, and you got cars on the inside line a lap down. You got cars just ahead on the tail end of the lead lap. It's chaos, and we're under caution again. Well, that was quick. We got Flickinger on pit road. McCreary's on pit road. And we're under yellow one more time here. Maybe, I don't know if maybe they waved it off to try and uh, figure out where everybody's supposed to restart or something. So, uh, yeah, we'll just step aside real quick. I'll look and see if there was any reason for the yellow flag to come out. If not, we'll get be back to live action. And here was the reason for the caution flag. They were coming around to get the green Anthony McCrary, apparently uh, mechanical problems for the 61 car. He's trying to get the car to pit road, and, boy, I don't, you know, it, if, if you're going to bring your car to the garage area anyway, you might as well just pull down there, you mean, take the penalty, but instead, he actually stops here on the racing surface, right in the exit of turn four, just when we were going back green, you're going to see the car come to a complete stop, and so very wise on answering officials to make sure that they threw that caution flag, otherwise there could have been a real big, big pile up. That could have taken place just off four. There you see the car comes to a complete stop. So Anthony McCurry brings out our second caution here. Let's go back green once again. And uh, this time maybe it'll be a little bit more organized. But being short tracked, I doubt it. Well, that was a very timely caution for all those drivers who were on the tail end of the lead lap. So they're all back on the lead lap now. As I believe we're getting the signal of one lap to green. Dallas McIntosh will line up on the inside line. First car lap down. Currently 22nd place. So 21 cars on the lead lap. And we do have a couple drivers out of the race. One of them is uh, Nathan Hudson. The other, Michael Norman. Not certain what's wrong with either of those drivers. Probably some mechanical issues for both machines as neither were involved in any incidents during the course of this race. It's going to be Richardson the leader. Osborne in second, McIntyre, Batson, and Dunham, that's your top five. Then Poteet, Srigley, Miles, Lamas, and Dylan Young. Green flag back out. We're back underway here at South Boston. And the leader's caught up there on the high line. You got to wonder which leader's going to get down to the inside line first. Looks like it might have been Trent Dunham. If he can get some help, some assistance from these drivers that are a lap down the inside line, he may be able to get himself up to the race lead. Richardson still on the outside line, trying to get around Cole Deaver. Kyle Matthews there, along with Jessica Shelton. Dunham still on that inside line. McIntyre now to the inside line. And the caution flag is out again. That was not what Trent Dunham wanted to see. But Dallas McIntosh, I believe, and Cole Deaver are now back on the lead lap. They both beat Richardson back to the stripe. And what could this yellow have come out for, I wonder? Oh, wow, we got a whole stack up back here. Everybody's just stopped. What in the world? Mitchell Carter, Baskinger, why are we all... St oh, now they're rolling. Flickinger is stopped. Okay, that was weird. Did somebody else lose power? 
Was there another mechanical issue? Is somebody? I'm trying to see if there's anybody lined up on pit road, and it doesn't look like it. I don't know what brought out that yellow, but that was rather bizarre. Dallas McIntosh and Cole Deaver are certainly pleased with it, though. That puts him back on the lead lap. And uh, the question is, will we get back green before 10 to go? If not, it'll be a single file restart with lap machines peppered through the entire top five. Another incident out of turn four, this time right at the tail end of the field. Mitchell Carter and John Art had both actually just gotten themselves back onto the tail end of the lead lap. And there you see John Art going to get into the back of the Jack Daniels Chevrolet. Our Almond Joy race winner, Mitchell Carter. Then Mark Carter not really appreciating that. Short tracks breeding short tempers turns right back up into John Arndt's red at Chevrolet. And the both of them up and into the outside retaining wall in the turn one area. So that's what put us under the caution for our third time here today at South Boston. Let's go back to green, see how many laps we're going to have left to finish out this thing. All right, then getting ready to go back. Green flag racing, James Richardson, Joshua Osborne, Trent Dunn, Levi McIntyre, Keith Batson. That is your top five. We're going to have less than 10 to go. It'll be 11 to go when they hit the stripe, which means the lap cars line up on the inside. Green flag back in the air. We have 22 cars on the lead lap. Make it 23 as Matthews back in the lead lap. 24 is Shelton back up on the lead lap now. They obviously looking for another quick caution. Zorlin now going to get by. Here comes Trent Dunham. Gets himself back to the inside quickly again. Trying to take the second position away from Osborne. Richardson now has an opportunity to get down to the inside. But Trent Dunham's going to block him from doing that. Dunham to the inside. Dunham to the race lead. John Arndt on pit road. A lot of front end damage on his Reddit Chevrolet. But out of harm's way. Osborne now moves into second place. Passing James Richardson. It's a long ways back to fourth place. It looks like it may end up, if we go green to the end, coming down between Dunham, Osborne, and Richardson for this win. Trent Dunham comes into this race 14th in the point standings. Think of what a win would do for him. According to my, uh, my charts here, Trent Dunham has not won since season one when I think it came at uh, either Montreal or Road America, one of those kind of road courses. And it'll be seven laps to go when he hits the stripe. Osborne, though, right behind him. Joshua Osborne trying to become the second go-or-go-home driver to find victory lane this season. The only one so far this year, John Bunnell, back at Bermuda. And he is within striking distance right now, is Osborne, driving it deep into that corner. And he got lap machines of Daniel Voiles, Blaine Keys, quite a ways back before you get to James Richardson, who's fallen into the clutches of some more lap traffic. Osborne, though, on the back bumper of Trent Dunham trying to take this win. Can Osborne pull it off? Trying to get to the inside of Trent Dunham. Trent hangs on to the spot, at least for the moment. Running slightly higher than Osborne is. Osborne trying to drive it down deep into the corner, trying to get to the left rear, get Trent Dunham maybe a little bit loose, a little bit squirrely in the exit of a corner. Dunham gained a little bit of ground that time. Got Osborne driving it deep into that turn. Wearing out the brakes on that 27 Castrol GTX Chevy as he tries to get around the Rain-X Chevrolet of Trent Dunham. And you've got Trent Dunham's teammate Blaine Keyes getting by Daniel Voiles. If Keyes can get up there, relieve some pressure off of Trent, he could maybe help his teammate get this win here at South Boston. Three laps to go. Osborne still right on the back bumper of Trent Dunham, hoping Trent makes a mistake. And here comes Blaine Keyes. Blaine Keyes goes to the inside on Joshua Osborne, trying to help out his teammate. Keyes has already got himself a potential spot in the chase of the championship with a win earlier on this season at Gravity City. He'd love to be able to have Sega Motorsports represented with two rides here this season in the chase as Trent Dunham is about to come around and see the white flag. He's got a teammate Blaine Keys, a lap car to help play defense for him. White flag displayed into turn one. Trent Dunham, teammate right behind him. Couldn't be a better scenario for Trent Dunham. He's got the slower car of Pichu Lennon to deal with. Dives to the inside. He'll clear him. Trent Dunham will pick up Hershey's Cup Series win. Number two, first of the season. He wins here tonight at South Boston. And Blaine Keys, his teammate, 
fought his way up there, took Joshua Osborne out of the equation, and Trent Dunham may have just clinched himself a spot in what would, um, ironically enough, be only his first Hershey's Cup Series chase for the championship. Standing should be nearly official. And indeed they are. Trent Dunham with the victory. Osborne, give that guy credit. He really fought up to the front all the way from the rear of the field after starting back there being one of the go or go home non-chartered rides. He'll fi finish the day out, though, in second. Solid outing for him. How about Dylan Young? Dylan Young was actually around the 10th position for most of the second half of this race, but fought his way up to third. James Richardson dropped from the lead back to fourth after pretty much dominating the maybe the latter half of this race. DJ Curtis, solid outing for him, so good run for quite a number of rookies here tonight. His teammate Matt Haas also there with a solid run of six, so Joe Gibbs racing fourth, fifth, and sixth for their Toyota entries. Keith Batson stayed in the top ten all day long. He'll get seventh, same for Cody Lamas, who's in eighth. Joseph Srigley, solid outing for him in ninth, and Dylan Pote completes the top ten here today. Benjamin Miles gets eleventh. Sanford, great run for him in twelfth. 13th for Jake Baskinger, 14th was Tim Walsh, Dallas McIntosh, after getting back on the lead lap late, managed to finish in 15th. Jonathan Zorlin was 16th, 17th for Leon Alvarez, JT Bryant, Mitchell Carter, our Almond Joy winner here earlier on today, gets 19th, Carson Scott in 20th, and the last car to finish on the lead lap was Levi McIntyre in 21st. Blaine Keys was the first car, one lap down in 22nd, and there you see the rest of the drivers that finished off the lead lap. I said that Kyle Matthews and Jessica Shelton had raced their way back onto the lead lap, but they actually, along with Cole Deaver, were all actually two laps down, so they got one of their laps back and were still a lap down to the race leader at the time. And we ended up having two drivers finish out of the race due to mechanical problems, and they were Michael Norman and Nathan Hudson. Tough break for both of those drivers. Of course, Michael Norman currently situated in the... 22nd position in points, our Coca-Cola 600 race winner at Charlotte did not need a run like this, needs to bounce back in the upcoming races the next four weeks. But Trent Dunham may have just locked himself up a spot in the chase for the championship here this season in the Hershey's Cup Series. Only time will tell. We've only got four more stops after this. Three more stops for the Almond Joy Series. They're all going to be coming up very shortly. Hope you enjoyed tonight's race from South Boston. If you did, be sure to give us a like, subscribe, cover a part of the crew today. We've shown you your full finish results. Up next are your point stands heading into our next race of the season. I'm trying to remember where we're going. I do not off the top of my head remember where it is and I don't have the opportunity to be able to bring up the schedule to be able to find out. So that's unfortunate. Well, actually, I might, maybe, possibly, could. Let's see. Uh, we are going to... Uh, let's see, here we go. Uh, we are going to Salem. So that's going to be interesting. Salem, another, uh, sh kind of short track, if you will. And so we're going to be doing back-to-back -back short track. So that's going to be very interesting. Hope you'll tune in for that. Anyway, thank you for tuning in. We'll see you guys next time as we continue on the chase towards the chase for the championship in both series as you've been watching production of the SRA, Offline Racing at its best. <laughs>